Before we move on, we should look at the vector space model, which is what we're going to be implementing. And you can see it's in the online PDF um, on chapter 10. Uh, it was developed by Salton back in the uh, 1960s. It's still very much in use today. It's the basis of many systems. It's relatively straightforward and easy to understand. In the uh, vector space model, uh, each document vector is a point in the space that, de that is defined by the distance on the axes associated with each document term proportional to the term's importance or significance in the docu document being represented. What does that mean? Well, we have a diagram here. Let us say we've got a collection in which there are only three vocabulary terms. Kind of impossible, but let's go with three because it's easier to draw. Uh, in a real collection, we'd have perhaps thousands of terms, but just look at three terms. <clears throat> we can look at the space, and here we see a three space. Each axis represents a different term. <clears throat> we got term one, term two, and term three. Now, where, where a term appears on this axis determine, is determined by how important the term is in a document. Here is a document, document one. And it has term one, term two, and let's say term three in it as well. These values for term one, term two, and term three are determined by how important the term is in the document. And we can measure this. We can calculate it. Number of times the term occurs in the document times a weighting factor for the term is one of the easiest ways. So we would have here for each document, let's say document one, three coefficients. It would tell us where to place the point representing the document in the three space. So document one might be so far along the term one line, so far along the term two line, and to some extent along the term three line. It represents a point in the three space determined by the weight of the terms in the vocabulary for this document. Some other documents, say document two, might be down here. It would have some of the terms. Perhaps it wouldn't have one of the terms at all its point would be someplace else. So that's what we mean when we say each document vector is a point in the space defined by the distance along the axis associated with each document term proportional to the term's importance or significance and the document being represented. Queries are also portrayed as vectors uh, that define points in the hyperspace. What do you mean by hyperspace? Well, um, here we only use three terms. And we can draw three terms in a space. But if you say you've got, say, a thousand terms, well, you have a thousand axes. It's a hyperspace. Can't be drawn, but the concept is still the same. Each document is a p point in the hyperspace defined by its position in the in the relative and the relevant axes. Now, a given document wouldn't have all the terms in it, so it would be zeroed out on the axes of many of the terms, but it would exist out in the space depending upon what terms it, in fact, did have. Um, queries, as it says there, are going to also be represented. We process queries and we get a vector for the query. That positions the point of the query in the hyperspace as well. We move down here, we can see something like that. Okay, here we've got the hyperspace. We've got, again, it's only three terms for drawing purposes, but it could be many. Uh, we have document one, document three, and we have a query. The query, of course, consists of terms. People wrote down a query. It has words in it. And we can, uh, we can come up with a document a vector for the query, or a query vector in this case. And that positions the query in the space. Now, the documents we retrieve for the query are determined by an envelope around the query. So if a document falls within that envelope, we say it is an answer. The more distant the document is, the document's point is from the point of the query, we say it's less related to the query. If it's very close, it's strongly related. If it's very far away, it's not so related. So that's, that's the basic concept. We will translate queries into, vec into vectors, doc um, like the document vectors. These will define points in the hyperspace, and we will draw. Basically, have envelopes. Um, when we do a, when we do a retrieval, we of course we present the results um, first that were most closely related to the um, to the query, and then le ones that are less closely related, and we rank them that way. So the further away a document is from the query, 
the uh, less um, less re relevant to the uh, query it is. Other things we can do is we can look at clustering, and we will later on. We could actually look to find documents that whose points are clusters uh, in the hyperspace. This exaggerates it, but you get the idea. Is that uh, some documents about the same topic will have their points relatively close to one another. Uh, and we can detect these clusters in a large enough collection. We might even be able to detect hierarchies of clusters. Uh, clusters which are relatively close together in another cluster that would be, say, over here. And we'd be able to group these into a hierarchical cluster. They could be about some area. These are different facets of the area. Uh, but generally speaking, they're about some broader topic. So that's a, some of the other things we can do. Um, we will talk about some of the me measurement Ter, uh, calculations. Uh, this is actually from one of Salton's books. Uh, the reference is in here someplace. Um, anyway, what he he was basically calculating the cosine metric. That was his calcula principal calculation between the vectors, and that actually works out quite well. And we will look at a variety of different ways of calculating the similarity between some document I and some document J. These are several that have been used over the years that are by no means exclusive of all of them. Uh, number, the third one here is actually the so-called cosine metric. Uh, this is the one that Salton used most often. Uh, these have various names down here and you can see that. And there's some calculations. Uh, so we will, uh, this is basically the model we're going to be implementing. Uh, the um, vector space model. And um, this is the basic concept. So if you want to read up on it, this is where it is. It's in uh, chapter 10 of the PDF.